point are banned by Pain Gaming. It's peculiar to them to ban it out. I can see where they come from because right now you look at Secrets lineup. There's a lot on the Outworld Devourer to create this space, the Lone Druid farm. Which we've seen before. Yeah, we've seen work. teams try to Loads make sure the Lone this. Druid, and I think OG did that yesterday, Yeah, where they made sure that Lone Druid could be complacent, was sitting in the lane, farming up, trying to get the Helm of the Dominator, work towards work the Radiance, out. and that, yeah, I think that was the one game they lost to Secret, and Secret are kind of playing that similar line up here. Yeah, teams at the moment are really focused on this balance between sacking lanes to benefit one, like, hyper carry. You see that with Newbie a lot, too. We were talking about how they kind of sacrifice Moogie's lane to open up the rest. Yeah, but the problem is that a lot of and teams are called that. So look at this lineup. Look at this pain gaming lineup. Oh, I like this a lot more. So, so does so that we... throw Kunkka and Lashrak into the 4-5 role? It so does. Kunkka 4, Lashrak 5. And, I, I like it this way. Interesting. Because the TA will handle that or devour a lot better. Than, and Kunkka's not too bad, right? Is this too greedy? This isn't too greedy. I don't think so, because you've got a lot of control out of your supports. And they sync up quite well with the different lanes. So Tidehunter to round out for Team Secret. They needed something that's pretty sustainable. Up against the Lifestealer, no one's really going to win that lane. It should be yeah. a draw. It's going to come down to supports rotations. And when you look at the comparative sides, the stun combos that Pain have, the, the, the split off into the Torrent, is going to be quite powerful here. So Weeha also answers the question who's going to be that vehicle for the Lifestealer too. Yeah, because perfect. I assume that we uh, will get a blink on that TA eventually. What do you go like Deso blink, and then you blink in, you have the life steward on you or in you, I guess, and you blink in, and um, you it's know not very you big use deal. that invest. It's not a very big deal to have someone that big inside her. But the thing is, the desolate blink is interchangeable. Which one you go first? You want to be able to go desolate first. There are scenarios where you need the blink. Yeah. I, I look at the lineup. Both teams may be a little bit more complacent to sit back and farm, so we will probably go for the Desolator first. Have your Ancient stacked. He'll accelerate ahead of mid one. Mid one's more reliant on getting kills and having his team translate into towers. Whereas Pain, they can just farm, they can actually farm quicker because they can go stack those Ancients, and then they come to that mid game with huge power spike because Templar Assassin in the mid game, probably one of the highest power spikes in the game. Yeah, and it will be interesting to see uh, how we have progresses through the game because it basically comes on what the tempo of the game is Absolutely, and that's the thing we've I've, I've seen this plenty of times where Templar Assassin what will happen is the the opponents Will focus too much resource too many resources at shutting down the Templar Assassin and they think okay out of the game then they leave the TA alone for like 10 minutes who keeps going back and forth between lane and stack jungle and suddenly Templar Assassin goes from halfway up the net worth chart to highest and, and that's, in good timing that's why i feel like you might go that desolator first you can rip through and and just get those stacks easier good luck in your game <laughs> i love the love parts capsule capsule and father <laughs> look at these guys this is a new thing i guess but yeah how I do mean, you get the hearts in game like that well you could probably copy and paste in oh, okay like that's that's usually the go-to for everything but you can already see the smoke coming out and both both sides are actually running pretty aggressively at each other. Puppy should have the advantage here, because what should happen is he should stand about here, mm -hmm. break the smoke of Duster, and if Duster's already placed the ward, he's just lost his ward, or he's completely deterred and Puppy sits advantageous. He hasn't got any sentries right now, but just getting that information straight away, you know in this type of lane, we really want a ward, because then you can actually get the splash through from the side blades. Yeah, so let's see it progress right here. Oh, he walked away at the last second. Yeah, I don't think he saw that, but you gotta assume that y you think the ward is there, and... Absolutely. You know it's gonna be around there somewhere, but now you might have to use two sentries to find out. You'll probably go for the gamble around here if it comes too much concern. You are gonna want a sentry in this lane because it is a Templar Assassin. Yeah, and how much are you gonna want Duster here? That's the thing. You take a look at Weeha, and I think he could be a little bit aggressive on the OD if he's all by himself. You bring Duster over, you get the Lightning Storm as well as the Split Earth. Working with a TA, if you land a Melt Strike, you can come in and really clean up on the OD. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think there's going to be a lot of a lot of blood potentially but in they, the off lane because they've stuck mid one down there. Interesting. They've this, sent yeah. Decided Ace is going to be better off. You think mid? that's better or worse for Weeha? I think that's almost better. It's worse. You think so? Because the bear will take away refraction charges that's true. and harass you away, that's and true. you're reliant on those refractions. Like if it's an Outward Vara, how does he get through those charges? Yeah. 
And also because you've got no melee in the front line, and oh, look at the bot lane. King RD, he's been caught out. Kungri's pretty tanky, but he can't get away. Vanish, the torrent will not get you your escape. Three here are surrounding, and they'll just finish him off. He'll dance to his death. First blood, and mid one does pick it up. Yeah, mid one getting that first blood. Do you like the astral imprisonment there? Um, to first... It doesn't hurt him too level? much. Like, okay. what are you going to level instead? Instead, You're not going to really level into the arcane orb. I mean, the Beastmaster would be a little bit annoying, but he can just start going for more points into the inner beast when he sees you've got no astral and then just run you down. Yeah. But this lane, the nice thing is because these two are so tanky, they can sustain up against Disruptor's harassment and nice torrent hits on the two. You see the combo they got there, just the axes. The problem is Yaps around the side. Stun's going to hit and now Tarbo taking a lot of damage. Should be able to move away, but they've got the astral if they want to use it. Getting closer, mid one. Thinks twice, they just, they'll just go back. They're wasting too much time. You see the, the distance between them and the creep wave. Yeah, I want to stay towards the creep wave and just continue to farm find those last hits, which, um, you know, that's what you're really looking for is just to stay in the lane. Like we said, they're trying to be complacent in, in farming at the moment, and if aggression comes, and if you find that spot, you'll go for the kill. But I think with the cores here for Secret, they will kind of want to farm through. Absolutely. And Tavo? And they've got the stun on a Tavo as well as... Disruptor continuing forward with uh, not enough damage. They can't kill him. They're yeah. still level one. But the important thing is that you're burning out all his regen right now. Uh, and King is just trying to pull the way through. He needs to do something for his Beastmaster. At the same time, he needs level two for the X. Yeah. That's when they start killing. Look at this. Spots out the ward. Nicely done by him. And Puppy is there, but it's just him at the moment. We'll spot King RD. And this does help out, of course, like you said, the Beastmaster, you want to be able to help this lane out as uh, OD, Disruptor, and Nyx can be quite a problem. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you can throw a little bit of harassment back, but you see what we're tra saying about trading and how, how the Thunderstrike allows Disruptor to do it much better. I mean, you're tanky, but look how much health you lost. You've now got yourself, you're going to have to burn through. Yeah, as long as Puppy has no mana, though, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. You see what we see in the mid lane? 11-5 to the 6-2, because immediately Refraction's gone. And the difference here is, if the Outward Devourer is here and he tries to get those Refraction charges off, he's actually... Oh, oh. no haste! Oh, he's dead. And nicely done to have that Nyx Assassin come in and get that stun through, because we I was playing that a little far forward for how low he was, and like you said... Yeah. Just can't hold on to those refraction charges, and if you just bring one person over to get the stun, they'll get the kill. Out. Might be able to kill off the bear. There's the X with the Torrent. Looking for the 300 gold, and it does go Weeha's way, so not the worst. That's actually more worth yeah, it. Yeah, that's more worth it to come back at the bear and get a nice 300 gold. That's like, nice level-wise, they're still very close, and yeah, there's, more, there's actually more gold in getting that bear at this point in the game, so he'll really be happy with that. Um, but this is, this is kind of the crux, is... He didn't really expect that gank because one, it's a haste rune. Mm -hmm. But two, you're always harassing him. So if you constantly harass, he doesn't expect Tavo that. Stunned harassing. up. They've got mid one as well as Puppy here. They start to hit away the Beastmaster. The body blocks come out from Yap Store. They look real nice. And with a Thunder Strike, as well as the OD hidden away, mid one will get the kill on Otavo. The and they're now up 3 0 in the early going to this game. Yeah, they're kind of bailing on Tavo a little bit. They're noticing that if we does get a good lane, that not only shuts down the biggest concern this game, but it also enables the biggest, the most potent uh, hero. I think if Weeha doesn't drop again, you look at how low the bear is, and if he could grab another 300 gold, that boost is just so lovely. And, and look, just the bear yep. is kind of struggling at the Thomas moment. Horan. And they've got the torrent onto the bear. Weeha uh, no not going to be able to go under that tier 1 tower, but he'll send it back to base and heal up that bear. But that works out for Weeha perfectly, like you said, with the refraction charges. Uh, Fana, he's been pretty aggressive here. Dustin needs to be careful. You're up against the tide. Really tanky. You're really just relying on the magic damage, but you're level 2 to the track. And look at this. Dustin taking a lot of damage. Oh, he's going to stun. He's going to die. I mean, teams are getting much better at dealing with this. Everyone thinks the track is this super duper powerhouse, but actually your stun is very predictable. You, you pretty much just kind of like kick your legs in the air and go, hey, hey guys, stunning. And because of the AoE at the level 1, you can pretty easily dodge that out. Oh, yeah. Root coming out to Wii. Maybe in a little bit of trouble here. Taking a lot of damage, he needs to back away. If they get another Root... I mean, this is the thing about Lone Druid lanes. You just chant Root the whole time, like Root, Root, Root. And if you get a, two Roots on a hero, most die. Yeah, we are uh, losing those Refraction Charges. He does have the ability to just kind of get invis there, and the Sentry Ward is in favor of the Dire, so they don't have that vision onto Weeha uh, if you were to go invis. So that's the one thing he's got going for him, but they can, like they're doing, send Yapsuar over and just start off. 
They've got the X marks to spot. Torrent's gonna miss. Now the Lightning Storm comes out from Duster, slows him up. But like, like we're saying, it's just Fada's too tanky. Yeah, it's, it's like that tickles. You want to spend some more time with me? Because this isn't completely beneficial for him, right? He's just trying to get bounties and whatnot on bait, and now Yap's all here to help with that. King RD hangs around, stunned on the spot, return stun from Duster, and the torrent hits as well. Fada getting pretty low here, needs to run off, but the X will hold him in place as HFN finally decides he wants to kill his opponent in lane. And the final hit should be there, trying to stay alive, trying to get a return good, but he will not find it. And all the while, Tava at the same time drops in the bot lane. You see how long it took to kill him, though? It's still worth it, but HFN does miss out on some CS. He tried, he actually waited for the wave to, to be pushing in before he ran over. Yeah, not only that, it took three heroes to take out that tide. Of course, they had the uh, Nyx there, but the stun comes out from Yaps, or HFN split Earth missing once again from Duster, which it wouldn't have led, it to, led to anything, but you'd still like to land those split Earths and maybe just knock out your off, uh, the opponent's offlaner from staying in that lane like that. You see what's happening with we again? Two roots. You've got no HP. But they are stacking for him, yeah, so... this is what we said. We'll see if this ends up working out where he'll, he'll have that, you know, have the side blades and clean up those those stacks in the triangle, kind of like Gyrocopter, but just not as, I would say, efficient. It's not, like, it, right now he's not actually strong enough to kill the Ancients, but they have started to stack them. He Which might go nice. for it now, because he's got three points of refraction, but I think it'll be too slow, so... He's at least going to want his boots completed into treads and secret wrap around the back here might actually find we puppy leading the way they're looking at king rd the kinetic field there's a stun with the impale and now do they even need a route i don't think they do they're just going to run him out the thunder strike will finish him off with puppy's last hit ace needs to be careful we doesn't want to fight this though three versus one is not good odds we're going to puppy though and there's the raw to control up we gets him viz again though this is this is just what can you do they put the mine down but it's just to walk away Actually, he might wait to get the damage. Maybe get the bear? Maybe too slow and in the top lane. In the top lane, you've got Duster here, and the Infestos pop. They look over at Fada, but the Lightning Storm, they slow him up. Duster taking a lot of damage, now stunned up. And he's in a little bit of trouble as Fada just walks away. They look over at the Nyx, land the Split Earth, and there's the Rage. That's why Carapace not doing enough to hold back HFN, and Duster will be the one who cleans up the Absor. That's really nice from Duster. If you notice, he he done the final hit, but he he waited to see if Spike Carapace was going to finish, and then Lightning Stormed. Yeah. Uh, so it was pretty clutch. What up? Oh, in the mid lane. Look at this. Ace actually dies there. They did lose the tower as well, though. Is the problem? So you get kill on Ace, but now you've opened up your map. Yeah. And, and the worst part about that is Templar Assassin. We just said he wants to go in the jungle. So that's where they're going to be able to look now. Without the tier 1 tower, they have that ability to just look in the jungle. And he might be found out more often, which might push them to throw Kunkka to be with Weeha a little bit more. Babysitting Dewey, right? Yeah. One of the things that I was looking at was uh, Weeha with his ulti. Drop down a trap, slow him up, lead with the split earth. Then you've got the lightning storm to slow them yes. again. So I just, I like that combination where I think the mid game is going to be quite nice for pain gaming. It but, sets up multiple people being stuck. Yeah. That's the nice part. Especially seeing as you start to level into the radius increases, of course. Let's use some people overlook. It's like, oh, it's only 25. So yeah, it's 25. And it's a com full circumference, so it's substantial. It's not like adding 25 to the range of fissure. Where it's just this tiny tip added. You know, we are starting to really farm up, and he is going to go for that Desolator before the Blink Dagger, which we're not too surprised about. This game has not been overly aggressive you know only nine kills and you know it's a kill per minute at the moment but it's not like that bloodbath that we've seen in prior games the tower taking is is going to be the concerning part as if pain can actually take more towers tide gets his an eye father though open wounds onto him he's got to stand fight he has got the ravage split i'm going to control him up do they actually want to engage on this though he has got the ravages hold on right now hfn chasing this down with the rage but mid one has arrived now you have to retreat dust are trying to move away we'll be able to do too as king does use the x to make sure he doesn't get hit up by the astral torrent Ooh. hits again on a mid one king's gonna keep running they might have to use the no they don't want to they thought about using Ravage for a second there, but it's a kill for a Kunkka. Yeah, if you use Ravage for a Kunkka, I'd say that it's almost beneficial for Pain Gaming at that moment, where Ravage is now down for so long. That gives Pain Gaming the opportunity to, I would say, farm safely. I don't think they'd be fighting if Ravage was down. Yeah, I always call it an insurance policy. And, well, how about this for some insurance policy? They wanted to get the bear. No mana. They, yeah, they might Kunkka want just the Hell Bear. If he's got the Helm of the Dominator and you've got X, easy 200 gold every single time if you can pull away that creep. 
Yeah, and that's the thing, because X also works on the bear, you so easily can kill it. It's just he didn't have the man of the, the torrent, so you just bring it back to you. It could have went quite awkwardly for uh, Ace here. But HFN, in the meantime, has actually made up his mind here. I feel like this is going to be him going maybe Solar Crest Radiance, which isn't too bad against these heroes. At the same time, maybe Armlet. Armlet's not the worst choice this game either, but most life stealers seem to be more reluctant to pick it up these days, I feel. Yeah, Fada and mid one just continuing to harass this tower while HFN is hidden in the trees, not really finding any support. The Nyx is actually going to join both the OD and the Tide up here while HFN just has to sit there. And that's, you know, a lack of farming in that moment. He's not making anything happen. He's not getting anything done. And that, to me, is a little bit of a problem when Lifestealer just kind of falls off a little bit in terms of his farming rate. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's more a case of, we said, you want your Temple Assassin to recover, doing so. Usually you have something to buffer the mid game while Lifestealer catches up. And nice well stun on the King RD. They've got the kinetic field that's going to lock him in. Three heroes here. They boat. don't get the kill. Now the boat's coming through. They've got the static storm laid down. And it's not going to be enough to deter Pain Gaming that static storm. They'll get the kill. Now mid one Astro Imprisonment to avoid the spot. They continue on forward. The glimpse away from Duster, but it's a kill anyway. They glimpse Duster back. It's not going to matter. They lose the OD. They lose the tide. And they keep their tier one, I believe. Yeah, they lost it in the right, end. No, it, like, it the catapult finished it. Yeah, but, but during that whole time, they had kept it. I ends mean, up dying right as I say that, of course. <laughs> that's the thing, right? Like, mid one knew he was dead. But yeah. the best thing you can do is try and cash in on that tower. So that's a smart move by him. Keep him at, uh, occupied as long as you can to make sure that catapult finishes off the tower. Well, that's the thing. This type of game, right? Like, you think of Astral and how it gets used later on. It's to save yourself or save a teammate just as much as get kills. Yeah. But the problem is you're in a game against Akunka, and he's going to anticipate that. Speaking of that, Kunka gets the X out on the puppy, going to be dragged back. He might glimpse back, Ooh. but not before he gets the kill. King actually hits at last. Kunka needs gold too, man. Yeah, but look at how hard Weeha hits. And it, again, it's that trap. It's that X, the torrent. Like, that makes torrent easier to land that slow. So yeah. it's just... I think Pain Gaming, like, I, I'm already reiterating myself. The mid game is going to be nice to them. We, we discussed this... I believe I went over this yesterday with the Nature's Prophet and speaking of things that are going over. Well, they want to run over HFN in the top lane. Completely surrounded. Does get in the creep, though. Run! Run, little creep! Astral. They're waiting. They're going to ravage yeah, this. Yeah, ravage, yeah. They're contemplating it there. HFN comes out. They decide to save it. The fear will just control them up. So, I mean, this, this is another reason why do you want to go for the armlet? In a game where you've got things like the, fi the fear use from Ace, mm -hmm. you won't be able to toggle. Like, that's... Decent amount of time. If it's three, four seconds with the. Oh, sorry. No, it goes up to two point four. I think it used to be three at one point. It's understandable why it's so low, though. You've seen how strong that's. Still, Especially since yeah, it works it's on still both. Still a nice amount of time. I mean, two point four is. It's actually a pretty filthy trick. I'm trying to remember how it worked because I don't play too much Lone Druid, but it was to do with when you level the bear and the raw. If you use raw, and then it's to do with leveling the raw. You refresh it, so you get two raws. I was actually seeing it quite a lot at, uh, at Dream League. It was actually ridiculous. My favorite part is is kind of like uh, one of the production guys was wa watching really closely. He came in and he loved his mechanics. He was like, like excited little kid about this. I love that. I love seeing these little interactions come out. And I mean, speaking of interactions, I was going to go over the Kunkka factor of X, right? Remember yesterday with Nature's Prophet? Yeah. And that got the ward vision. And like you were just saying, it sets up the trap perfectly this game. It sets up a decent amount, I'd say. Um, you could look to do things like life stealer moving in with the X and then rage if you actually want to stay and fight so you can scout with him. Typically, you won't use a call like that. And Ace, he does get X'd up himself. But can you move across in time? What's happening right now is secret with their, just how much they're pushing. They've already taken out the top tier two. They're looking towards this mid tier two. I think Pain Gaming do have a good mid game, but they're being pressured pretty heavily at the moment. It's also the fact that Wii's getting good levels. Like, the talents you actually get as a Templar Assassin are pretty decent. I especially like the Sonic Trap damage at 15. Your hero is really about those big spikes, and well, the Absor, he gets found under a reward. Held up, Primal Roar coming up. So many stuns just for a Nyx, but he just got six and will get no value out of his Vendetta. But they're not done just yet. They've still got the bow. They could look for more here. Yeah, the, with Weeha getting the kill on Yapsor, I mean, it's just bumping him up even more as he's already got that 400 net worth lead above the Lone Druid. 
It just feels like Secret are pretty reluctant right now. They just want to have Nyx scouting around, maybe looking to snipe out Coria. Meanwhile, they want to be farming up on A still. And Pain are in this different scenario where HFN just wants to farm, but the rest of his team wants to go kill. And they have the means to do it. You just saw how many stuns they could throw out. And that was because they were so close to the shrine, they didn't want to risk a turnaround. Yeah, they have quite a number of slows and stuns. Oop, glimpse on Duster, not going to bring him anywhere really close enough to get that kill. They have Ravage available to them. Ooh, nice stun. Static Storm down the torrent. Hits on two, but nobody else is here. They, ooh, they even Ravage for that. They have they to. might get Duster as they continue to chase. Have the Astral. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be another kill on for this little Shrek. So they get the little Shrek. They get the Kunkka. They're four or five on the side of Pain, but they use Static Storm and Ravage at the same time. I, this is going to help them push and most likely grab this Tier 2 tower, but you think that's worth it? Like, they actually shouldn't have got anything out of that, so it's kind of worth it. So you actually saw that glimpse that came out. Pain went full alert because what they now they knew the moment that happened is that Nyx is on top of them. So they just looked back away. And now we, he wants to actually kill off. Primal Roar goes out onto Farda, trying to run him down. He hasn't got a Ravage anymore. Not the most valuable kill. And we just waste in the kinetic field. Mid one will get away. Meanwhile, on the other side of the fight, Tarvo, drawn off. Farda, he will die. Not so tanky when you get hit by that much magic damage, and HFN trying to chase them to more, but they will have to... I think they just look for the tier 1. They don't get overly aggressive here. Just send someone bot to stop Ace from pushing in, and uh, take the tier 1 of Secret mid. It looked like it was going to be a lot more um, kills there for Pain Gaming. Uh, the way that Secret was set up. But they got the kinetic field around Weeha, that kept him out of the fight for the most part, and... VOD walks away off that. They had the Primal Roar on the tie, but they didn't really have follow-up from that because Weeha was so out of the fight. And the absolute, I mean, this is what I mean. He's scouting really well. The glimpse back. Actually going to find on the King RD to connect the field. They do miss the Impale. He might be able to walk away from this, but there's a stun and return on the Absol. The X to make sure they can't chase. And this is the great part about Kunkka as a support, right? Like, you actually have to kill him. X can turn around on you so badly. It's kind of like comparative to the importance of removing Disruptor because of glimpse. Right, you control someone up, you keep them out of the fight. Even if you're dead, that's actually kind of like, if you die halfway through an X, that's worse for them because there's potential response. You've got the boat, there's huge spikes. And at the same time, he's so tanky. 1,400 HP compared to what? Nyx, 750. Disruptor at 938. I'm really liking the Nyx uh, Disruptor combination, actually. With the Vendetta, you get that vision. You can use the Glimpse, pull them back. It didn't lead to a kill right there on the King RD, but I do, I think, later in this game, that's going to start really bothering Pain Gaming. Yeah, the difference would have been that he would have got across. Um, that would, our Dwarrow would have got across and would have been able to Astral them up so everyone could surround him. So you're right, it's, it's a nice combo. And Well, Puppy, he gets caught by par that con. <laughs> we just jumping in and shredding him. Desolator and Blink now up means... This is this is jackpot time. This is this is Payne's time to push. Yeah, this take is, all the towers. This is Wee's I'm gonna really start to rip through people time, especially with HFN. They gotta be very careful on the side of secret because we are can really just spin out of control. He's already twelve hundred in front of the lone druid. Like this is tiptoeing on Payne really pulling away. This is I would getting say. more worrying because the Shadow Blade is actually now coming out for Beastmaster. So they'll have that backstab initiation. It's kind of comparative to the Faceless Void in that you're looking for the prime target on the back foot. Yeah. And the thing is, most people, like, you, you think, oh, there's a Templar Assassin. She's going to use the Mel. They'll be looking for that. Not as often as you think in secret. Five man smoke. They'll actually find weed. This is the prime kill they were looking for. And look at this, trying to reinitiate. But the Ravage comes out the boat. A little too late to help. Dust a little bit deep himself. Stuns up. They need to run. But they want to fight. The Prime Roar coming out next. But can they kill him quick enough? The Roar forcing them back. Tarvo wants to turn around. But can they field control him? HFN alone as he chases away everyone on the secret side. Torrent gets the kill. Puppy. They don't even want to finish him oh, off. Really He's the ace. prime me. He'll be pulled back and his fate is sealed. Ultra kill for Wii. Wow, we are buying back and getting himself an it. ultra kill, making it so worth it. And that was HFN also setting up the infest, grabbing those heroes, getting them low. The torrent lands, the split earth gets through. Perfectly done by Pain Gaming. The buyback's not as costly as it would be later in this game. And then now going to Roche is going to be Aegis too. That's perfectly done from Pain Gaming. That should have been so much more costly, and it looked pretty grim, right? But they they were five man smoked. They commit the Static Storm just to get the kill on, on to E, and that's to stop the right clicker. You have no follow up for the Lushrak, for the Kunkka, which means you could get a boat initiation. And you heard me say the boat was late. It's too late to save Wii. 
but it set up the counter initiation. And the important part was HFN. You saw how far forward he pushed. Because when you've thrown so much on one individual, what have you got left for the life stealer? Who now has radiance? Yeah, he was burning them with that radiance, hitting them quite hard in that fight. They landed everything they needed to with that Weeha before he bought back, and and that was done perfectly. And it is going to be that Solar Crest Radiance build from uh, Life Steward that you were talking about too. It's so much better. Yeah. Like, what's your alternatives? You really want to go for an arm? No. I, I, we already talked about the raw. I think it's also just the case the Solar Crest when you've got. Especially when you've got a Templar Assassin on your side, is going to be ridiculous. No one will survive. And Duster, this is super deep. Yapsil's going to find him. There's a stun through. Farda even arriving as well. But guess who's on his way? Life Stealer is waiting in this Mud Golem. The Primal Roar coming out to Yapsil. There's going to be the control with the Torrent to make sure he can't get away. Meanwhile, the X, the boat, dragging back this Tide Hunter. The Static Storm goes down for Farda. He doesn't have a Ravage to work with. He won't even get a chance to survive this. The Met just delaying the inevitable as they get two for the price of one. Yeah, Duster stayed alive a little longer than I thought he would. He, he got completely low, and then they just couldn't get that last tick immediately. And with the follow-up coming in from the Life Steward, who didn't even have to pop his Infest, the rest of the team comes forward. Great play there by the Kunkka to put the X onto the Tide and not worry about the Nyx at all. And he pulls the Tide back, and that's what leads them to two kills. By the way, welcome to the game of Radiance Creeping, right? <laughs> you just got the Bear, and you got the Mud Golem. I actually didn't get the deny on that either. So he's just slow pushing this in. Meanwhile, on the bot lane, they do get the Aegis. So we are going to come into that second life. They've got the bear nearby. They're looking with Puppy as the refraction comes out. The Melt Strike hits onto this disruptor. The root comes through on a Weeha. They'll get themselves one, and he just bought back recently, so he's dead for 65 seconds. And they're looking for Tabo. The stun's going to miss from Yapsor, and he will end up going invis, but we'll see if Tabo's able to make it away. The TP attempt, and so. whoa, they've. We're looking for him, but don't find him, and he's able to TP away. Going into that Necro book now, too. Yeah, they might have been able to turn around if they had mana. Kunko was completely out. He was dry. He, like, he had the boat sitting there. He had the torrent. But nothing to work with. Part of that did come down to how much they've been spamming out beforehand. And, and this is always an awkward part when you're playing Kunko. You could just X, go back to base, and return. But especially when you're playing support, your mindset is, I need a TP to respond elsewhere on the map at all times. It's not the same as when you're caught and you know, like, oh, I'll just go back to base and pick up my, uh, my Daedalus <laughs> and I'll, uh, I'll just refill my bottle, you know, get that effect. So we have 10 seconds till he's up. You've got the Necrobook coming out for pain and they push decently well. I mean, with the Shrak as, as well as the Beastmaster and, and, you know, just with the TA2, I think their push potential. It's also for the Knicks in those pushes. And speaking of the Knicks, he just went invis, running through. Dust Duck glimpse back. Yapsaw. They'll now know that he's here. And they'll go for it. The Static Storm comes out. And Dust that's trying to shred for him quick enough. Mid one will arrive. Two hits will do the deal. Yeah, HFN thinking about going in to maybe try to counter this play. But losing Duster, losing that five position with Shrek is not that awful. And they're, they're okay with it. I think it's kind of problematic because Payne's supports offer a lot of control in these fights and actually Dust has been pretty pivotal with those yeah. stuns in a lot of these engagements. So it's more like Secret, they were maybe hoping for more but they'll be happy for what they committed to for that kill because it's, it potentially stops some of the aggression from Payne. Yeah. That aggression, that poor little bear. There's no hope in hell that he gets out. Number Ooh. 300 gold. Nice 300 gold there for HFN and I, I think Payne gaming at the same aspect are, are just you know they're okay with farming at the moment well, the thing is they are more or less where they need to be to just charge forward they've got the bkp up and we they're going for a daedalus next that's just the that's the cherry on top they can kill people very fast at this point even the tide hunter disappears if you blink so they are smoked up and the ward is here so it spots hfn all by himself doesn't see these other two heroes. There's oh, the dust. dust. It's on Yapsor. We are blinking forward. The Spike Carapace will be there to sun him up for just a moment. The X comes through as well as the Torn, but the Astro Prisman saves the Nyx for a moment. They've got the Rage coming through from HFN. Stunned up once more. Will be Weeha. The boat comes in, but this isn't going to hit on anybody, and they'll only lose the Nyx for now. I think there was a Primal Roar out there, but... It's on the Tide. He's on his own. And Wee's going to run him down now. Drags him back to Torrent. Forced off to safety. The trap, though. Wee's going to chase on the Static Storm, but BKB. We going forward. Looking for mid one. Mid one has to retreat. They're going to have to leave their Tide Hunter behind. And that's a Ravage that will not be able to be used. They might look to push in on the side of Pain. 
There are tier twos to be had in the other lanes. Maybe they just go high ground here, though, with Tide Hunter and Nyx dead. I mean, Pain just very dominant in their position there. You saw they were waiting. They patiently waiting. They knew that Yapsil was going to arrive soon. On top of that, you saw them take two different fights. And Beastmaster against the Tide Hunter on his own. It's such an important thing for you to find on the side of Pain because it stops the Ravage from getting in the middle of that huge clustered fight Pain we're in the middle of. Yeah, I think. Pain might grab a couple of kills and maybe wait for Roche. Uh, it's definitely something that they'd like to pick up and get the Aegis and Cheese before they really go for that high ground because Ravage is still available Dust is when dead. Tide is up. But Dust is actually dead. Oh, missing the stun. That could just be it. Oh, yep. So he couldn't really look for a stun in a nice place. He had to try and dodge around the trees because otherwise you get roared. So really nice kill coming out there. And the thing I was actually going to say about Duster is building that drums, just pick them up. I don't like it. I don't like drums uh, on many supports because it just you feel you feel like it's good. You got the movement speed. You're giving your team that, that movement speed buff. You're a little bit more tanky. But it doesn't actually really keep you alive at all. I mean, you're still going to, despite the fact you get some extra stats, you're still incredibly squishy. Better off to get something like a Glimmer Cape, for example. But Kunkka went for it. And it, like this hero, I think, would have been better than the drums because we keep seeing we have mana issues. So do you really want the hero that has mana issues to have to uh, Ooh, carry the Glimmer? Stopping that TP, Tabo moving forward. They're the trying root. to find him, but the root comes out. They finally get the Primal Roar. Infested is Tavo, but how much damage he's taking from that pair, he's just forced to back away. Yapsor continuing to go in with the Spike Carapace coming out a little bit early. Glimpse on the Duster, pulls him back into the Kinetic Field. The Torrent hits onto the Nyx as well as the Square. The Melt Strike is out. There's the Static Storm laid down as the Nyx Assassin is still alive. Finally drops the Wild Axes of Tavo. The boat comes in as well, hitting Fada, and they're looking to re-engage on Pain Gaming. The contemplator right now, King RD could go for another X opportunity. And Wii's moving forward with a blink, but they know that secret away. Anything that they try to chase you now will look very kind of desperate. But that could have been so much worse. You saw Tarvo feeling pretty aggressive at the beginning. He throws out the primal roar and won't get a kill with it. And that more or less just signals secret to go. And that would have been horrible because HFN, of course, was inside Tarvo at the time. Do lose the Nyx Assassin once again. And right now, Payne with a 5,000 net worth lead, I, I do, again, believe they're just going to wait for Roche. Maybe try to find a pickoff or two before they go into that Roche pit, especially, I would say, they want to want to look to, for Fada, because hmm. Ravage against the team trying to Roche is always nice, and it can set up quite a bit, especially with the Sanity's Eclipse. They drop early or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. And at the same time, you have to be worried on the pain because they have, they have the Kunkka. The boat in the pit could completely win a fight. Mm-hmm. Especially seeing as, as soon as you hit the boat, other than people four staffs, how are you going to get out? You're going to run straight out the front door, which means the torrent's probably going to be waiting if you haven't already been hit by that beforehand. Same with the track. So Roche, I think up in about two minutes. Yeah, it shouldn't be too long of a way. Yeah, two, two and a half. half. And then they will be ready to rock. And both teams, they want this pain. If they get it on Wii, they can easily break high ground. Secret actually is more just to stop Pain from breaking high ground right now. They'd be happy to just slow down Pain's farm and keep going. And well, Tavo's going to increase his own as he finds kill on the puppy. Static Storm drops and miss. down. Wow. Sneaky, you know, this is the power of the Shadow Blade. And also with the Necronomicons, you can see Yaps will come in a mile off. Yeah, just in case he's in a little bit of trouble. Ace checks the Roche Pippa. Like we just said, it's not up for another two minutes. Absolutely. And HFN is actually going for the Sanj and Yasha. I like this. It tanks him up a decent amount. And Yaps, or I think they actually spotted him here. Tavo doesn't have no detection. a lot of mana wear detection over in that area. They do have the Sentry Ward by the uh, Shrine, but that's about it. You're basically praying that Yaps will comes back to you, which isn't likely to happen. King, I like this ward. No one's likely to deward this. It also means that you can now go for the Roche. And they have to go the obvious route, which we were talking about these thin funneled areas really benefit pain. Yeah, both teams have some good funnel abilities i would say mm. like ravage as well as the uh bow absolutely and, and, and ace is going for his axe next so he he knows how easily he could be found on the back foot now and how quickly he could die he just wants his little baby bear to live on in his memory carry the flame dude so 8,000 net worth lead for pain gaming again just staying forward staying aggressive looking for that pickoff before roche is uh 
Uh, Roshan is back up, and they are really starting to extend this into a hefty lead that I don't know if I won't say Secret can't come back from it because it's only 10,000. Well, this won't help them. They're about to walk straight into Wii. Wii goes all right into Puppy. The stun's come through. He needs that to use BKP, but he's stunned up. The Ravage comes out. The Static Storm was thrown onto him. They haven't got any follow up now, but the Yules might find them a kill on the Kunka. They're chasing in, and mid one is here. King RD trying to run off the torrent, but there's a Primal Roar. Far as the target, but that's not the prime one for you. HFN stands his ground. Duster being shredded through, and HFN, he needs to get out of here very quickly as the rest of the side of Secret chase onto you. Tarvo does find a return kill on the that disruptor, but if you lose HFN here, I mean, you're basically going to secure the Roche pit because it's up in just 10 seconds, and they have secured it. Yeah, that was exactly what Secret needed, and I was going to kind of get towards that as that fight sort of broke out, but yeah. they did the, exactly what they needed to do. 10,000, not a lot of gold for this Secret team to really overcome. I don't think it's ever out of their hands with both a, L, you know, with a lone druid as well as a uh, Outworld Devourer, but, um, you know, they get those kills. HFN set back really hard on that fight. Yeah. Didn't get involved until they came into the stairs by him, and I, I just was really surprised to see him that far back. Feels like maybe a little bit of a miscommunication there. As yeah, we uh, want to go. Yeah, nobody and else really followed him. That's perfect from Poppy the way you read that because oh HFN, no, this is this can't be happening. Nice. This Bringing him greedy. over to Duster for a moment. They'll get the stun. HFN in a little bit of trouble. Down to about half health to continue on forward. There's the rage. Split Earth lands on two to keep them back. But HFN playing a game of thin ice at the moment. Oh, Primal Roar coming out. Tavo does find Tide again, but Fado is not a prime target for you. And they have no follow-up there as everybody's using that shrine. It does push oh. them back, and they look for Roche off this, which is quite nice. They know Ravage uh, they, is not available. Yeah, they don't have Ravage to work with or Sanity's Eclipse. Static Storm is available, though. Those big spells for Secret is... Uh, they throw down the kinetic field, Roche down to about half health. They look over at the bear. HFN's got to be very careful down to about half health, and he does heal himself back up, hitting that bear. They'll take the gold, and Weeha now stuck here with the kinetic field. The BKB's going to be popped as well as the boat coming on through. They've got the split earth. Only hit on the bear is the boat. And let's see if they're able to find anything off this. There's the static storm not landing on anything either, and this is turning into a bit of a just secret able to use stuff to push them okay, back because they do get King RD. Yeah, Fluff Dolts coming out uh, repetitively from both teams, but Secret mm -hmm. can go back in. There's no boat now, so a little less paranoid. They have to be careful of Duster. We are just ready to steal him. this Aegis. He hasn't got BKB though, so this is very difficult. But there's the buyback. King RD on his way. They are going to contest this, and Fado needs to stand his ground. HFN on the back foot, looking for a kill on the Yapsaw, and he might be able to get it. No root in place. HFN protected, but the Ravage comes out. The final kill on the Duster turns straight around and lunges as well. The Sands Eclipse to kill him off, chasing on for more. We just hiding, but how long can you hide? They get the kill on the Puppy, though. It's King RD, and we, he's next to hit the deck. Refraction just waiting out, tries to blink away, will make it to safety. But that Roche. I mean, this has been bouncing back and forth, but finally, Secret feel like they may have actually secured it. Yeah, the second Weeha tried to come into that fight was right when Sanity's Eclipse and Ravage were available. They both get popped. Ravage hits Weeha as he blinks into the fight. It stops everybody in their tracks on Pain Gaming, and that ultimately becomes a problem, and they aren't able to really make much of it as Weeha does grab a... Constellation Courier. It was very ballsy, considering how low he was. That could have been very wrong if he wasn't oh, careful. Yeah. But, yeah, no, the, the thing that you see there is, like you said, the Ravage coming off cooldown. And Pain, it just felt like they invested so much at that point. They thought, we can't let them have this. We have to stop this. But Kunker wasn't ready. He bought back. He wasn't in position. He didn't have the boat at the right moment. And then Tidehunter just has to stand in the middle of the river and scream King of the Hill as he uses Ravage, wins the fight for his team. Yeah, now this game back to even in terms of net worth. So, uh, Pain Gaming that once had a 10,000 net worth lead, it's gone all the way back. There's still still opportunity with Pain Gaming having Weeha and and their uh, life stealer top of the net worth. So, it, you know, an even game, it's not out of their hands as it's dropped so much. But the Secret definitely finding their momentum here and looking to push forward with the Aegis and Cheese. So, Shiva's actually coming out very soon for mid one. And when you look at Pain's lineup, the worst thing for them, like what's allowed them to take fights so far is their kind of superior positioning, the way they were able to split up and then come in. But Shiva's, it's not only going to protect mid one against the right clicks in the middle of the fight, it's going to allow him to actually slow them down on that re-engage. Yeah, it seems like a little bit of communication issues on Ping Gaming with uh, when in fact to go in. Um, but yeah, Secrets had some great positioning and they've really taken advantage of the poor positioning of Ping Gaming at these, at these fights. If they can just milk 
the map and make sure the secret don't really get much out of this Aegis, then by the time that's expired, we will probably have a nullifier. And in this type of game, consider the mid one, we consider who we just talked about. He still hasn't gone for that BKB yet. Eventually he's going to, and then he's prime target. In the meantime, it's probably going to be the Tidehunter just to stop the pipe and mech coming out so you can kill him quick enough. I mean, it's a good item, all in all. It's kind of future-proofing at this point, because as we just said, there's not really BKBs right now on the side of Secret. Yeah, and they've got the Silver Edge ready on Beastmaster, Tabo. Who's his prime target, you think, with that Silver Edge? It's probably the Tide, yeah. because that, like, when he's got Ravage, he needs to disappear quick, and you see how long it takes him when he's got the Kraken Shell. Yeah, they've been struggling to kill Fada in the last couple of fights. We might find the bear. It's decent stat gain as well, so it's not the worst choice. And we'll actually, prime roar on the bear. the bear. They'll go straight for it, and they'll get the kill. I mean, this is also, it sounds weird. It's not the worst choice to silver edge the bear as well, because it stops the roots. And we say how fatal a root can be in the middle of a fight, but secret, they want to go high ground. HFN is here. They looked it back up. And they're looking for a setup as they do have that Ravage as well as the Sandy's Eclipse. And now they know the Glyph is gone. So they might let these two catapults come in. They might wait for a creep wave, I'd say. But yeah, it looks they, like they're just going to retreat. In they fact. force them back. Like The more important thing here is that you stop Pain from taking more of your towers. Because right now, you've, you've exposed Pain's base, right? If you take a good fight, walk in, take the whole place. But Secret's advantage comes from the fact they've kept tier, two of their tier twos alive up to this point. Tavo looking towards the BKB next here, which I, I agree with. I, I think it's the biggest important factor about these BKBs is stopping mid one from just increasing his intelligence. Yeah, and that big fight by Roche, Sani's Eclipse did quite a bit. And of course that was lined up with the Ravage. So that together is just those in succession are gonna really destroy you. Upan, moving forward. Puppy, it's actually got a Vitality Booster here. Is he actually going for the Spirit Vessel? It wouldn't be the worst choice against so many strength heroes. Obviously not great to use against the Lifestealer, but on the Beastmaster plus the Kunkka, not too bad. He absorb though. He does have a gem. He sees Tarvo, the Yules. There'll be a stun waiting you when you come down. The movement forward mid one's there as well. Tarvo will disappear, and that's the entrance kill they've been looking for. He does not have buyback yeah, available. Yeah, he's gone for 80 seconds with no buyback. That means there's no counter push if you wanted to go out and use the boar as well as the necro creeps to try and push to force back secret. It puts Pain Gaming in a, in a really poor spot and now they're going to have to defend 4v5. They're actually fine because the creep waves are so pushed in that by the time you get to the base, they're not even going to know if he's got buyback or not. They're just going to assume he's not using it. And Fada, way too far for Open Wounds comes out. The X is there. The stun's pulling back and he will die. That's your tide. That's your tank as individual. Look how quick it dies. An ace chasing on for more. We wants to get his kill. The impale comes out and they'll turn around. We take a lot of damage. Stunned up and ruined. He'll die. Sandy's Eclipse a mid one. He charges forward. They want more. Now that they've got Templar, Sess, and Dead, they'll look to push for this high ground. Yeah, they've got the creep wave coming in. No Weeha for 80 seconds. If they could force the buyback, that would be nice. But it doesn't Vegas. look like they're going to take an aggressive approach considering they no longer have the... They just... They don't have Ravage. So it, it, it's... Bad for Pain Gaming in that moment to lose Weeha, but it could have been much worse. And they've got some fortunate timing with the Aegis. If I think if they still had the Aegis, they'd go, even though they don't have the Tide. But without the Aegis, without Tide, there's no reason to pressure that situation and try and go to the high ground like that. I mean, it keeps looking like Seeker are, are winning, right? Like they can go high ground every time. And, and like we said last time, the creep waves just push so far out. And this is actually the power of Temple Assassin. Like, you plop down a few of your traps in lane, and you just keep it pushed out for so long. And it's, it really is an insurance policy on high ground pushes. Yeah, so they're able to hold. Tava will be back up. We hop back in 30. Doesn't have to expend the buyback, which is... Uh, Second one they haven't had to expend. Yeah, very I mean, crucial Tava here. But yeah. The point is similar. Boom. Tavo will have the BKB soon. It should help a decent amount, but we've actually seen how well Secret he, Combo stuns. He might not have it. Uh, Yapsor is coming around the back. Tavo just kind of AFK for a moment. They look for the stun. They still have the gem. The Yules is there. They'll get the Impale with mid one moving in as well. They'll have this kill. Tavo gone once again. And this time it's 90 seconds without buyback. And a few of the creep waves are actually pushed in. The mid one especially. So... <laughs> No joke contender mid one, but he will move across to the rest of the team. They'll push in. They have got the Ravage available, and this is really awkward for Pain. 
So we just said their advantage is that they keep the waves pushed out, but a little bit hard to do now. Creep wave gets cleaned up and secret. They're just trying to find these creep waves, push them in a little bit more, and maybe find an opening. And at the moment, it's it's a little bit tough. It, it's definitely tough to go high ground against this being gaming lineup. So it's secret trying to play it perfectly. They might just continue to push in until Roche is back up. That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Then you've got Refresher Shard if you're able to take that Roche on, which will be giving them a second Ravage to work with. Hmm. So if you just continue to pressure Pain Gaming, keep them from really farming too much, getting out of their base, you're fine. And if they do come out of their base, you might even find a pickoff and then go high ground. So it, it sets up quite nice for Secret overall. I'm just trying to work out whether Ace is going to go for the... Uh for the Entangle cooldown or the Valkyrie. They're actually both really good here because we just, we were just saying, if you actually get the combo off, there's no BKB coming out from whoever you target on pain. But if we get this off, you're a little bit concerned. If the raw pierces that, especially at this point in the game, when you're getting down to those lower BKBs, that's what gonna end up, once you get down to five seconds, it's gonna be at least half the duration of your BKB wasted. And that's not even equating the time it takes you to run back to them. So I, I feel like he maybe just goes for the Valkyrie piercing because it works so well against the lifesteal as well but you could go either way depends how much uh how much attack speed you think you've got but with a basher as well on that bear i, I imagine it's going to be the the rule you'll see he just picked up a tome now he's trying to push himself to that uh, next level well he knows the game's going to drag on for a few minutes more so he might as well get a bit of light reading well he doesn't even need it at this point he's really close to 25 maybe we'll give it up to somebody pain already posturing roach is about to come up and the info will be there for secret. They actually need to get a bird across. So any moment they feel like it. Yeah, Pain, uh, this is a do or die moment for them. They do have a couple of buybacks available, but th they if they lose Roche. this Roshan, like that, that's bad. They actually can't Roche because they need to get the lanes pushed out again. Yeah. Because secret with what they have in their lineup, if they jump on your high ground, you're going to lose at least one lane. And that would be worthwhile trade for them. Even if you get the Roche still. So let's see what they're able to do. <laughs> so, yep, they actually did go for the Battle Cry Skull Mini. I'll say it's great, it just allows you to run away. And at the same time. They're coming over too slow. Pain Gaming's gonna miss this. It's yeah. just, it's too slow of a reaction. They all had to go back, they had to push out this creep wave. Now they're not there, the double Ravage will be available, and Secret have the second life, they have Cheese, they have double Ravage. They're ready to go, and this will be their moment if they try to look for a fight, but Pain, they're trying to cut off somebody, maybe look for a pickoff. They might they're even find the Puppy. Puppy. They want to get him. I That's think they tried try for the kill. X, but... Base is nearby, they ping onto him instead. He hasn't got the Aegis, remember, so he jumps through him to Primal Roar and Null Fighter, make sure he can't do anything about this Ace. Saved by the Astral Now, we needs to be careful. The boat coming in, but Fada holding on to the Ravage in the meantime. They're going to look to flip this, there it is. It comes out of the Static Storm as well. Tarbo not too bold because he's got his BKB running, but HFN, he will be turned into a piggy and die off. They have to actually get out. Duster is so close to death. In fact, if it wasn't for the boat, he'd be dead. And they have to leave King RD behind. Chasing for more though, they see Tarbo as well. He's gonna be chased on too, Yapsaw's here. Hasn't got the Impale for five seconds. They'll just run him down and make sure he cannot move away. Remember, his escape item was a Silver Age and there it is, they get the kill, mid one. Oh, this man is godlike at this point. He's yeah, having he's a fantastic game. Actually beyond godlike at this point. And True. they have Tarbo gone for 80 seconds and 50 seconds gone on the Conquer. It just, they're gonna force out the buyback on HF and they'll look to get to the high ground. They used one Ravage. I believe Tide still has that Refresher Shard ready. And uh, we'll see if uh, Pain are able to hold on to this as HFN has bought back. So it's a 3v5, 14,000 net worth lead for Secret as they go and try to take this top tier three. Glimpse comes back. They turn this Lushrak into a pig, take out Duster so quickly, and they'll continue on towards the racks. We high over bottom just trying to push out, maybe find something of his own. But his top racks are already gone. They're going to lose the entire base if they don't get back right now. But what can two of them do? The answer really is nothing. And... It just, you have no way of breaking this lineup now. You really don't. And they're gonna go actually for the tier fours. This isn't even disrespect. They, this is actually respect. They know they can get through it quick enough and buybacks would have came out if they were available. The Shrak does use his and Kunker is back up. But they decide again, so they say buyback. Okay, back's taken the racks. We'll go for the mega creeps. 
So King RD going to try and move forward on to Ace. The rest of the team is in the back lines. They've already taken out F HFN, who's already bought back for 100 seconds. we got to see if Weeha can fight. He moves over on a Duster. Three shots, and he's gone. BKB here from Weeha, but it's not going to be enough as the whole team is here. GG's called by Pain Gaming, and Secret will take game one. You see what we're talking about, like, with those big torrents and, and ships and how amazing they are in the early mid-game. And then you get to this stage in the game, and everyone just shrugs. I mean, they had the right idea by pinning them in position four. This game was actually incredibly close, despite what the gold chart says. It was just one big fight one way or the other. And it was always going to come down to that Roche bit. Yeah, they missed their moment there. It just seemed like Pain Gaming, they had a 10,000 net worth lead. That one bad fight that it seemed like if they, if they won that fight, this game completely goes the other way. But all of a sudden, Secret, they take advantage. They get the kills. They get like a three or four there. And that's where the game turns around. I think, like, like I, honestly, that lone druid, like I said, I was, I was bragging about the 25 a lot. And it is important because you get that spell immunity. You save yourself from BKB a lot. And you, did you notice how you changed from the Ags to more aggressive items as soon as it happened? Yeah. Because at that stage, you know it's not going to die. At that stage, he knows that Wii's damage has fallen off, and they are so reliant on the stun combo to get a kill. So, I think you are right. Timing-wise, as this went later, Secret just felt more and more dominant. The Lone Druid was getting more dangerous, and the outcome is Team Secret take game one. Yeah. But, only game one. These are best of threes, and we will be back in just a few minutes for game number two. Pain are looking quite formidable. Let's see if they can snatch one back, or if Secret will just walk away with this series in two. And we'll see if Secret can take it. We'll be right back. It's um, myself as B-Cup and you as Killer Pigeon. We play ourselves. I mean, I think I'm Killer Pigeon.